What's going on everybody? Jim in here with today's new comic book day reviews. It's Wednesday, July 7th, and even though this is one of the largest stacks that I've ever had to deal with, I did get these a couple of days early, so I didn't have to stay up all night today to read them. I'm going to try to get through these as spoiler-free as possible, but before I get started, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. We're doing a giveaway once we hit our next subscriber milestone of 150k, and we're giving away this Deja Thoris premium format by Sideshow. All you got to do is be subscribed, leave a like, and comment on this video stay tuned to the end of the video not only for my pick of the week but for more details on the giveaway and one last thing we got to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video cheap graphic novels cheap graphic novels is your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90 percent off cover price cgn is excited to announce that they're now taking pre-orders they're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases cheap graphic novels is currently running a special promotion for the geminites if you're a first-time customer let them know that you were referred by gem Mint collectibles at check out and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is only valid for the united states cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more all right guys you know how we do it let's start with the books that i read digitally which is from image we have geiger issue four by jeff johns gary frank and brad anderson you gotta love Geiger 4. It's definitely one of the stronger indies that are out right now. We get some more backstory on our Atomic Man, our Shining Man, as he's trying to escape with the two children from Las Vegas. The artwork is great in this book. It's highly detailed and the story is super interesting. We see some interaction between the Prince of Las Vegas and his deformed mother. That's kind of an interesting dynamic. And we have like a Mad Max runaway scene here, which you can see on the cover. Great book, highly recommend it. Then we have Noctera. This is by Scott Snyder, Tony S. Daniel, along with Tomei More. Another very strong title from Image. Nocturnal is this environmental situation where everything is dark. It's the big PM. There's no light, and it causes mutations amongst animals and humans that are called shades. Well, we have found kind of a sanctuary, kind of like these little deposits of natural light or sunlight, or so it seems, which can potentially heal people, changing uh, changing from humans to shades. So it's definitely getting interested in the main characters, kind of this uh, sister-brother relationship, tying back to their parents and what happened to them when they were taken over by the shade, I guess you would call it. Uh, so another very interesting post-apocalyptic type of story. Then we got a new number one, Ordinary Gods. This is by Kyle Higgins, Wantabe, William, and Cowles. And this is basically Kyle Higgins saying, hey, I could do stuff besides Power Rangers type stuff. Interesting premise here. You have gods that have obviously been alive forever. They are immortal. They have their own territories that are like on a different plane of existence than the world that humans live on. So each territory is its own thing. The territory of love, inspiration, greed, things like that. And there's this assassination plot happening here. Gods can inhabit the bodies of humans and not realize they're gods. They're almost hiding in plain sight until they're resurrected by their worshipers. So the plot is surrounding this ordinary guy who doesn't realize he's really a god within until his whole world comes crumbling down as it gets made aware that he's being hunted so definitely uh different stuff from kyle higgins but i was digging issue one all right sticking with image let's go image skybound and we have firepower issue 13 by robert kirkman and chris samney so a big fan of this series it is a super fast read every issue it has a lot of art to tell the story and this is after the big arc this big war between owen and his family and the scorched earth clan and the old temple where he was trained and everyone's kind of just back at home, like expecting something bad to happen, kind of training, uh, teaching his kids how he's able to throw fireballs uh, and, and kind of like a chill issue until the hook at the end on what's to come. So always enjoy uh, firepower. It's probably a really good trade read because the single issues move so fast. All right. Then from Aftershock, we have Out of Body Issue 2. This is by Peter Milligan, Anaki Miranda. Eva de la Cruz and Sal uh, Cipriano. So I definitely liked issue one. It was strong enough for me to go and pick up issue two, kind of see where this story is going. This guy's in, his, in a coma. His spirit is uh, kind of in between worlds, almost like he sees the white light. He's headed towards the white light, but we have our, our psychic character who can talk to the dead, trying to warn him of like these magicians, this cult type of scenario where they're trying to basically pluck this fresh soul so that their master can eat it. They don't like to eat the dead souls. They, they really want it to be fresh. So that's kind of like why they're hunting after him. So you have this like astral form type of scenario. You have this 
uh, magic-based Earth-type story. And then you have this other scenario w- where he's in a coma and he's basically being abused by his nurse. So there's a lot of threads going on here. It almost plays out like the movie Ghost a little bit when he's with the, the, the seance girl and they're walking through the streets and he's trying to talk to people, trying to figure out who attacked him and who put him in the coma in the first place. Definitely a lot going on in this book, and it's interesting and fun the whole way through. All right, guys, moving on to Boom Studios. We have Basilisk, issue two by Cullen Bunn. He's joined by Jonas Sharf, Sharf and Alex Giamaris. So I definitely liked issue two more than I liked issue one. You have these monsters, these gods, whatever you want to call them, these people with powers who do terrible things. They're on the hunt for this uh, person with powers named Reagan. She's the one that has the veil over her eyes that when she looks at somebody, she can cause destruction and death and causing their eyes to bleed and all this kind of crazy stuff. And the girl from issue one kind of using Reagan as bait to bring in the other gods or whatever you want to call them because she wants to kill them all. They ruined her life, what have you. They, They destroyed the city. And they show how ruthless they are and how little they value human life when they're in this diner the diner scene was crazy and the the dialogue between them on how nonchalant they are about killing uh fun issue definitely interesting and i want to see where cullen's gonna take it all right guys on to dark horse hellboy's got a new little mini series out this is hellboy and the bprd issue one of two and this is the secret of the chesbro house by mike mignola christopher golden sean mcmanus and dave stewart so this is like your typical type of supernatural Hellboy stories in this. Uh, what well, he gets called to this haunted house. They're trying to relieve the house of this curse that supposedly got started when uh, the owner of the home was doing evil things with orgies and satanism and all this kind of stuff in there. So it plays out like a Hellboy BPRD issue, uh, just how you would expect. Um, I would rather have Mignola's artwork. The artwork, the artwork was okay, but. Uh, he was on the story, so he's still behind his IP, which is great. Uh, it was all right. I'll pick up issue two and see how it plays out. Then another one from Dark Horse. We have He-Man, uh, the Masters of the Universe Revelation issue one. This is the official prequel to the Netflix show, and this is by Kevin Smith, Rob David, Tim Sheridan, Mindy Lee, Rico Renzi, and Daron Bennett. So I actually picked this up not realizing it was going to tie into the Netflix show. I'm just a He-Man fan, and I see a new number one. I'm like, okay, let's see where it goes. Yeah, so they're telling this story kind of like of King Grayskull, how he got the the sword and how the power of Grayskull even became a thing. There's this interdimensional monster who attacks someone in He-Man's time and he has to try to figure out how to kill it because it's poisoned his father. It put him in a coma and kind of interesting to see uh, the seeds they're planting for the Netflix show. So uh, it's kind of like an animated series uh, vibe to it, more updated like how the new show looks. So uh, overall, I liked it. I like the little Skeletor stuff they had there. Kind of uh, more origins of how the sword came to be, King Grayskull and all that kind of stuff. So it was fun. All right, guys, moving on to Marvel. We have Extreme Carnage Alpha Issue 1. The symbiotic story of the summer starts here. So it went from Absolute Carnage to King and Black. Now we're here at Extreme Carnage. But this is by Johnson, Garcia, Smith, Deering, Pogi, and Guru EFX. It's basically the return of the Carnage symbiote. And it's headed up by Flash Thompson. And it's a Agent a- Agent Anti-Venom story. Yeah, basically. So there's this new cult around here that just hates symbiotes. It's uh, reviving the Friends of Humanity and this guy running uh, for mayor or president or some political thing like that. And, and basically trying to band against symbiotes because after the events of King of Black, everybody knows that we're not alone in the universe, that aliens are here in the form of symbiotes and they cause de- uh, death and destruction and things like that. Kind of interesting to see how they brought back the Carnage symbiote, kind of an underwater fish to shark kind of thing that was pretty interesting. And uh, Flash Thompson having to put together his own little squad to try to combat Carnage. He's kind of still tapped into that hive mind of the Carnage symbiote and If you thought I was done with symbiotes with King and Black, you were wrong. All right, we have Immortal Hulk issue 48, Al Ewing uh, with Bennett, Jose, Barbo, and Mounts. So, you know, I always kind of joke about the Elizabeth uh, Ross or Betty Ross character as she hulks out, but this whole issue was basically her with Joe Fixit as this new version of Hulk, this devil Hulk, uh, kind of hashing it out like in the hotel room. Everybody's laid up and trying to lay low from the events of the last issue. 
but I thought it was pretty touching with Betty's relationship with Joe Fixit and how it ties into Bruce Banner and Joe kind of admitting that he left Bruce in the mine and in the hellscape of his mind or what have you and that the leader's involved and all these kind of things. So uh, you can see they're going to try to wrap it up. They got to give the reins to Donny Cates for uh, the new Incredible Hulk series, right? So we'll see how Al Ewing uh, wraps this one up as he goes to take over Donny Cates' book uh, with Venom. All right, so here we go with X-Force issue 21 by Percy, Kassara, Gil, and Guru EFX. This is post the Hellfire Gala. And, you know, I like the X-Force team. I like the Kid Omega stuff. You have Wolverine with Domino. Uh, and this is basically like a Swamp Thing type of issue or Man Thing type of issue, I should say. We're not, we'll talk Swamp Thing later. Uh, it's a Man Thing issue, but it's not really Man Thing. It's, again, X-Men dealing with plant-like creatures uh it was okay i don't know didn't really do much for me all right hellions 13 this is by uh, wells antonio and burrito so wrapping up the end of the events from ten of swords with the clone mr sinister and the real mr sinister getting left behind and the whole kind of like scam he was trying to pull where all the hellions died so they wouldn't see uh what his true thing was i don't even remember what it was to be honest with you this issue was just okay as well uh the nanny has this um i guess they found this new kind of ai mutant that they shouldn't have and the nanny's kind of keeping it under wraps is beefing with the orphan maker and the orphan maker's all pouty and everything i don't know it was just an okay issue. I like the sinister versus sinister dialogue going on here, but it was pretty forgettable. All right, and one of the big ones for the week, guys, X-Men number one. The relaunch of the title by Dugan Laraz Garcia has a great wraparound cover, and it's the new X-Men team. So this is basically establishing the X-Men once again operating in New York City. Uh, they have now a skyscraper, uh, on, I think, on the west side of Central Park, and it's a big Krokoan plant-like uh, building that they're calling the treehouse so it's really establishing them once again having a presence in new york city yeah there is this kind of kaiju monster that comes through and fantastic four show up and avengers show up right after the x-men take them down and kind of welcoming welcoming them back to new york as well and it's planting the seeds of what seems to be a more long-term villain somebody who his whole life was preparing to uh inhabit mars and to terraform mars and all that kind of stuff and obviously the mutants just crushed those dreams with taking it over and making it a Rocco and planet size X-Men. So I thought it was a fun issue overall. All right, moving on over to DC. We have Wonder Girl issue two by Jones, Mello, and Bel Air. This is the Yara Floor Wonder Woman story. And I was a little bit let down with this one. Not really much happened. I'm a little lost in the beginning here where Yara is underwater with this mermaid. And it seems like this is how she gets her lasso of truth. I was a little bit confused with that. And overall, just kind of like this weird... All these Amazons are hunting her down because she's a threat to all Amazons. And I guess, I don't know if there's two sides of Amazons hunting after her. I, I kind of was a little bit lost there as well. You have this fight scene in the aisle of like this public plane was pretty interesting. But overall, I was a little bit let down by it. The artwork is great though. All right, on to Batman 110. This is by James Tiny and the Fourth, George Jimenez, and Maury has a backup Ghostmaker story by Tiny and Ortiz and Ferrado Jr., Talk about great artwork. This is probably the strongest artwork out of the whole poll. It feels like you're reading an epic Batman story, something that's going to be in a collected edition later on. Bruce Wayne, uh, Batman versus the Peacekeeper 01. And we're getting more backstory on the Peacekeeper and what drives him. And it's not looking too good. This is uh, These are the seeds of the Magistrate, a future state. So it's interesting how they rolled this out. We got what happened in future state. Now we're getting what's leading up to it. Peacekeeper going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman. He actually has to call out for help from Ghostmaker. So that was kind of an interesting save here. And makes me think that maybe Batman and Ghostmaker are going to get along more so than I thought. In the backup story, it just shows how Ghostmaker is a force to be reckoned with, with or without his armor. This is a story told by this kind of killer croc type of alligator uh, mutant person uh, and how he fought him toe to toe and this and that. So a little more backstory on Ghostmaker overall dope issue. All right, on to Brian Michael Bendis' Justice League with issue 64. He's joined by Pug and uh, Phil Hardy. Justice League Dark backup story by Ron V, Kumar, and Ferraro Jr. So this is the aftermath of the last arc off of Naomi's homeworld. Everyone's back, and the world kind of accepting this new Justice League that has Black Adam, it has Naomi, and it's almost like uh, parents visiting their kids at college. Naomi's, I guess, foster parents or adoptive parents come meet her. She's in training. Aquaman's trying to teach her hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was overall a pretty chill issue. They are introducing this character, 
from the beginning of the issue and it shows back up later at the end this character who was supposed to go on trial for i guess defeating superman or something along those lines super powerful they go to put him on trial boom he's not there so this uh this creature shows up at the end and i guess that's what the next arc is going to be it was okay it was like a downtime type of issue and i didn't read the justice league dark backup story i, I kind of flipped through it it seemed okay but i'm just so behind on it but speaking of ron v his swamp thing with issue five he's joined by mccray and mike spicer great colorist so this was a great swamp thing issue it reminded me of something out of alan moore swamp thing and i know i make those comparisons a lot but i'm doing it as a compliment as the cover suggests this has to do with this atomic bomb more specifically an atomic bomb from world war ii that never detonated but the idea that it stood for the hate seeped through from underneath the building and it started changing the inhabitants of the building to make them kind of like these nazi fascists and swamp thing he's called there by the green he's got to get rid of the bomb and that's kind of the gist of it i thought it was great uh, heavy like i said alan moore vibes and uh continuing to like what ron v is doing with swamp thing all right then we have batman the adventures continue season two issue two by burnett dini templeton and kubana so like i always say if you like batman the animated series and you want to see the court of owls and the talons and dead man uh and and all these other characters that came around later uh, after that show went off of air or maybe characters that they just didn't want to do because they were too hardcore this is the book for you love the team up between batman and dead man which is kind of misleading if you look at the cover it really doesn't have much at all to do with uh, a talon fighting nightwing but uh or Zatanna. I don't even think she was in it. Anyway, I'm enjoying the series. Super fun issue. Let's talk about Crime Syndicate because I feel like there were so many titles that are looping into Crime Syndicate now. So it's uh, issue five of six. They're calling it The Legion of Justice. This is by Schmidt, McCohen, Hitch, Vines, Olive, and Sinclair. And honestly, I was not digging this issue. I've liked every other issue of Crime Syndicate so far, but I didn't know what the hell was going on. Like, who is even fighting who here? How many giant people are there? How many people could shrink down? I didn't really get it. I was a little lost. A couple of issues are tying back into this. I think it's one of these issues that I uh, already went through. The end of Swamp Thing, which all ties into Suicide Squad. So let's talk about that. Uh, at the end of Suicide Squad, they reference Swamp Thing and vice versa. So it looks like that's going to tie in. This is issue five, and it's by Thompson, Soy, Pasinka, Pura, uh, Prado, and Sinclair. And I really dug this issue of Suicide Squad. So this focuses around a new uh, Suicide Squad member. I think his name is Bloodsport. He looks familiar. looks like a Judge Dredd type of character from back in the day. I'm not really familiar with the character, but it, it looked familiar. And Amanda Waller has sent him to Earth 3, I guess, to find the metahumans there. And he finds all the crime syndicate but he's really digging the crime syndicate he checks on on this version of himself and everything like that and then has to go up against Ultraman and crew and it just made for a really fun issue moving on over to Justice League Infinity this is by D uh, Mateus Tucker Beavers and Philardi and this is kind of like the Batman adventures continue but for um, the Justice League so it's kind of like that type of tone i felt like it was really really wordy i'm trying to even re remember the plot here i really wasn't digging it and, but then again i didn't really grow up watching the justice league animated series like i did with batman so this one this one wasn't really for me if you grew up watching the show you may want to check it out i can't even remember the plot on this all right moving on over to crush and lobo issue two of eight this is by mariko tamaki uh nahulpan and bon villain so what's funny about Tamaki, she's writing uh, Detective, and this feels so much different than that. I think it's a little bit refreshing. I really like the narration of this book. It makes it feel like uh, Crush is talking directly to you, very nonchalant, kind of like moody teenager type of way. She is on a mission to go visit her father Lobo in this space prison. So it's just kind of a fun issue. Her stopping for intergalactic coffee, her kind of talking to, I guess, her AI about the breakup with her girlfriend and gives a little bit of origins on how they met. Uh, but overall, it was a fun issue. I liked it more than I did issue one. All right, here we go. The next Batman Second Son issue four of four, wrapping up this little mini series by John Ridley, Foreman, Underwood, uh, Ratmund, and Locus. Man, I cannot recommend this series. I thought it was super boring. There is little to no Batman stuff at all. And I guess it makes sense. This is kind of similar to the Batman run where we already got next Batman in Future State. And this is leading up to Jace Fox, a.k.a. Tim Fox, on him becoming the next Batman. None of that is necessary in these four issues. It feels super boring. 
I think um, the Jace character is super hypocritical. Like he accuses this uh, guy talking to his father, Lucius Fox, that uh, oh, I can smell the privilege from here. But just last issue, you were talking about how you were taking private jets to your sweet 16 and turn around midair and go to the party in LA. And like you literally grew up a millionaire's kid. So I felt that was super hypocritical. But why am I interested on the new ongoing? I do want to see him as Batman. I want some Batman stories. But that didn't happen in any of these four issues. All right, let's move on over to some dark DC stuff. It's not Black Label, but it's DC Horror. That sounds like a new title. The Conjuring, The Lover by Johnson, McGoldrick, Olgi, Grayson, Brown, Faria, and Spicer. Spicer putting in work. Issue 2 of 5, there are two stories here. The first story picks up from the uh, last issue. The second story is a brand new story. So I guess the main story is this girl in college who something is just creeping up on her, getting in her head, uh, kind of possessing her at times. And as the as the story progressive, it has stronger and more of a stronger influence on her. So that's kind of interesting here. The backup story? Can't even remember what it was. All right, guys, on to my pick of the week. I kind of assumed it was going to make pick of the week, and it delivered. Issue one was my pick when it came out, and now we're on The Nice House on the Lake. Issue two by James Tiny and the Fourth, uh, Al, uh, Alvaro Martinez Bueno, and Jordi Belair. All right, I'm going to try to give this without spoiling issue one in case some of you guys still haven't watched it, but basically you have... This group of people that was hand-selected by a mutual friend, they're on this nice house on the lake. It seems to be tailored to them, and basically an apocalypse happens outside their walls. Now, we're getting a little bit more of a hint on what the person or who the person is who brought them all together, what type of supernatural or extraterrestrial or whatever capabilities they might have, and then just kind of learning how to deal with with what is going on on the outside world how are they supposed to be living here in this house together what's happening here so that's kind of my non-spoiler take on it make sure to check in either friday or saturday i'm not sure when i'm going to drop it but uh i dropped my top 10 favorite comics of the week with rock and robbie where we talk full on spoilers and we'll both i'm sure be talking spoilers on this book so make sure to come hang out with us then uh and comment down below what your favorite book was of the week like i said we're doing a giveaway once we hit 150k where we're giving away this deja authors premium format by sideshow and all you got to do is be subscribed leave a like on this video and comment below once we hit the milestone, we'll go live the following Sunday, pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway, and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to check out my top 10 comics from last week. Make sure to check out the new comic book day reviews from last week as well, and stay minty fresh. Peace.